coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pam, man. I appreciate the love, man. I appreciate the support uh, for all these uh, prison stories, man. Y'all been rocking with me with these 33 years of prison stories. I appreciate it, man. Um, I hope y'all been enjoying these characters, man. It's just a, a number of dudes that I ran across during my 33 years of incarceration, man. I'm just trying to bring them to life to y'all so y'all can get some type of understanding of the type of life I was living the type of people I was around and the type of things I experienced. So, I appreciate the love, man. And if you ain't subscribed and you've been watching this, man, shame on you, man. You need to hit that subscribe button, man. Y'all like these videos, man, and share these videos because I think it's something in it for everybody, especially these young dudes out here. They need to know what they're getting themselves into when they put themselves in a position to go into prison because, like I tell you all the time, it's not a game. And that is for real. That's a hundred percent. So, um, with this one right here, man, I'm gonna start a new series, man. It's still gonna be these 33 years of prison stories, man. But this is gonna be my cellmate edition. My cellmate edition. This is the first one, man. I'm gonna start telling y'all about these different cellmates that I had, man. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the unbelievable. Trust me, it's some unbelievables in here. So y'all can determine which one is which. But I'm going to start it off today with y'all. Because this is one been on my mind. So I'm going to hit y'all with this one. And see what y'all think about it. And y'all let me know in the comments, man, and everything. But this one is going to be about a uh, dude we call Kitchen Man. Kitchen Man. Oh, Lord, let me tell you about Kitchen Man. Kitchen Man was... Uh, a uh, 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 dude, let me paint the picture for you first. He's a tall, slim dude, man, maybe 6'2", 6'3". Uh, very, very soft-spoken, man, almost to a whisper. And he moves real slow. It's like he real lethargic. Everything he do is like, yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to... You know, that type is... It can get really, really annoying if you're around him a lot. But that just his demeanor. That's just how he moves. But it definitely will annoy the, the heck out of you if you're around him all the time because it just seems like he's just real, real slow on purpose, but that's just how he moved. Um, the reason they call him Kitchen Man because he worked in the kitchen, man, and he was the kitchen man. You know, he used to bring food out, you know, sell food, uh, vegetables, onions, green peppers, you know, sandwiches out the kitchen because he worked in the kitchen, so he had access to this stuff. And in a block, man, every block need a kitchen, man, man, because you got to get some out that kitchen to try to spice up the food that you already eat, try to enhance the food that you already got, mix some up together with some vegetables or whatever, whatever, make you a good meal. So, i.e., that's how he got the name Kitchen Man. Okay, uh, now I got to, I got to paint the picture for you so I can, so y'all can get a better way to understand how I come to be involved with Kitchen Man or how I come to end up having him as a sale part. Uh, we on Greensville, you know, this is a Greensville uh, 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 story here. And um, I had got moved into the block because it was somebody in the block that was uh, going to, was supposedly to be uh, possibly one of my family members. So I wanted to be around to get to know them and or whatnot, you know, so that's why I was trying to get in there. Plus, I had a lot going on at the time. Meaning that I had just came into uh, what would be my first of a couple, but it just came into my first cell phone, you know. And like I told y'all now all the time, I won't live in on straight positivity as I do now on the straight and narrow. But back then, you know, I was, I was you know, living how I can live, man, and trying to do what I can do. So I had came across a cell phone. I had my first cell phone. And it was crazy how I ended up with this first cell phone. And to let y'all know how green I was, I get the cell phone and how I got it, I ain't gonna get into all of that because you know, I ain't gonna incriminate nobody. We don't do that over here. But I get it and I get 
in my cell with I had just moved in the block, mind you. Now I'm in the cell with, at this time, I'm in the cell with a, a white dude. The white dude is a maintenance man. You know, that means he works with the administration, the maintenance department. He goes and fix toilets and sell lights and whatever have you, this broker-run institution. So they had put me in the cell with him when I moved in the block because this was the only cell that they had open. Now, me and him, we not going to coexist. I can tell you that right now. I have been locked up a long time. He had been locked up relatively a long time, not as long as me. But he had accumulated a lot of stuff. He in his own comfort zone, in his own cell. He got stuff everywhere. I come with a lot of stuff. So we just not going to make it. I can tell as soon as I get in the cell with somebody whether or not we going to make it. I know we not going to make it, you know. And like I said, I ain't got nothing against uh, nobody and definitely not nothing against no music. But, man, he, he just had his ways that I just couldn't, I know I couldn't stay in there long. He played music all night long. I need some peace and quiet when I'm going to sleep or normal peace. A penitentiary noise is good, but music right there in the cell. Plus he playing country music all night long with kind of like high. So now nah, we just won't go make, it, you know what I'm saying? And I couldn't press him and I couldn't be rude, which I wouldn't be unless, you know, you know, the situation called for, it, but I could Cause like I say, he worked with administration. That won't be nothing for me, but a quick a quick trip to jail. You know, I won't do nothing to get crossed up in that situation. So I understood the situation for what it was. So I just try to coexist with him till I can find a better situation. And I let him know that we're gonna try to coexist, bro. But I'm gonna try to go ahead and get up out your way. I ain't trying to, you know, interrupt nothing you got going on. I'm gonna get on up out here as soon as possible. But in the meantime, let's, you know, try to, you know, get along, man. And that music at night, I ain't gonna be able to rock with that. But so anyway, we came to some type of understanding that um, I won't be there long, so we was going to try to go ahead on and uh, make it work. So while he is at work, though, he work a lot. He gone in the daytime, almost most of the day to late in the evening. So while he gone, now I got this phone. Now I got to try to see what's going on with this phone. So it's my first phone, man. If y'all could have seen me, if y'all could have had candy camera and watching me, man, y'all would have been laughing y'all butt off, man, because of... What I was doing in that cell, trying to make this phone work, man, would look so funny to people who know how to operate phones, but you dealing with a dude that's been locked up so long. I ain't never had one of these phones in my hand. I ain't never knew how to work one. I don't know time I seen a cell phone was on TV. So it was crazy that I actually got one in my hand in my cell. I done covered up my cell, blocked my cell all up, so I'm up in here. I get the adapter out. I get the whole adapter. I got the adapter out. I done plug the adapter up. And I put it in the phone because when I left the street, phones had, you know, wires and cords. So I'm thinking you need this for the phone to work. So I done plugged it up and everything. I'm trying to get the phone to work, man. I couldn't get the phone come on for nothing in the world. So I'm like, this is gave me a broke phone. What? You know, so I'm, I'm fiddling around with this thing for the better part of an hour. And I couldn't get it to come on for nothing. So I'm thinking it's a dud. You know, I done got played, whatever, whatever. I wrap it up, put it back in the bag, man, put it in my, tuck it in my pants, cover it up with my shirt, go down there, holler at, you know, my family. And I, I, I knock on the door, tell them, come, you know, get your door open, man, get up, get your door open, let me holler at you. They're like, what's up, I gotta holler at you, because I had previously told them that I might possibly can get a phone. Once I found out that you could have a phone, that cell phones was actually coming into prison, I was like, you know, I was in awe. I'm like, what? You know, I said, well, let me try my hand, see if I can get one, pull some moves. I get it. So he didn't think I could, but I did. So I get the phone. So I go down there and I tell him, I say, man, I got this phone, man, but uh, I don't think the joint work. So he was like, you got a cell phone? I was like, yeah. He said, where's that? I pull it out, show it to him. He was like, oh, wow. What? You know what I'm saying? He in shop, you know, because this, you know, like, man, this, this, this is a high commodity right here. So he grabbed the phone, turned it around, hit the button on top, push it down, hold it for a minute. The phone light up. The face of the phone light up and the numbers and stuff come on and he'd have cut the phone on that simple but to me it was like rocket science you know what i'm saying so i'm looking at him like oh man so i'm like you don't need the cord he's like nah man you don't need no cord for this man he said look i said work he said bloop, 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 bloop. call somebody he was like yo yeah yeah this me yeah 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 hey look say hey look hold on for me and say hi to the bank give me the phone i'm like hello what? Man, I'm, yeah, it was on from there, you know what I'm saying? So now I know this don't work. I actually got it. Man, whew, started a path of a, 
whole whole another level, man. I get into that on another story if y'all want to know about these phones. But um, I had some experiences with them. So anyway, now I got a phone, and now I got to come up with a routine to protect this phone. This phone, let me tell y'all something, man. This phone is um public en enemy number one in uh in in the institution. You know, this is a, a higher security uh, breach than a knife, drugs, uh, anything. And the reason being is because the phone has the ability to record or to expose things going on inside a prison. All the mistreatment, all the bad food, all the, 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 the abuse, all the, you know what I'm saying, inhumane treatment that they give us can be exposed if a phone is in that on that compound. They know this. This is why that phone is so, you know what I'm saying, such a, man, if they find or know there's a phone on that compound, they shut the compound down and they try to tear it up. I'm talking about from head to toe, man, with a fine tooth cone to find that phone. So you dealing with some serious stuff now, you got to be on your P's and Q's at all times when you got that phone. So I know this. So I, I, I got to come up with my routine, how to keep this thing here, how to be on point, how to, you know. And the number one thing is, loose lips sink ships. Tell no one. If no one knows, no one can tell. So the only one knows is me and my family. You know what I'm saying? That's the only people who know I got the phone, you know, on the institution. So, anyway, so now I'm moving like I move with this phone. So now I got to find a safe spot to be in for us and myself. I don't trust the dude I'm in the cell with because like I say, he worked with the administration. So he probably don't want me in the cell anyway. So it would be nothing for him to let it whisper out that something going on, they coming in and turn me off. So I gotta get out of there. In comes Kitchen Man. Okay, Kitchen Man is uh, in our block. And like I say, he's a real quiet, meek dude. Tall, skinny, like I say, you would, nah, you would probably wanna say he kinda goofy, nerdy like. He's in the cell with, uh, I think it's either white dude or Puerto Rican. He looked like he might be mixed with somebody. He's in the cell with a dude that's just as nerdy as him. You know, I mean, truth be told. And they both in there, this is the stuff that goes on in prison now. They both in the cell with each other. Both of them couldn't break a plastic straw together combined. <laughs> You know, they couldn't, but they in there beefing with each other because they don't want to be in the cell with each other. But both of them got too great a pride to move. If he move, he feel like he being chumped. If he move, he feel like he being chumped. So now one of them want to move. So every day, literally now, every day they going in the cell and they fight. But they fighting and they ain't even doing nothing. Getting little busted lips, little scratches on them, little this. They fighting every day. Trying to make one or the other one move, but don't ever want to move. You know what I'm saying? Because I can say that one will feel like they being chumped. But dudes is laughing and tripping off of them because then they ain't one of them, you know, like I say, they ain't, they ain't, but they, they ain't busting the grape, right? But so my people was like, you know, that's a good idea right there. Yeah, won't you holler at Kitchen Man and see if you can switch with his cellar? Because I've seen his cellar talking to your cellar before, so they kind of cool. Y'all might can switch. You get in cell with Kitchen Man, you cool. Since Kitchen Man work at nighttime till all the way till in the morning. And in the daytime, he's out in the park all day. So it's like you got a single cell if you in there with Kitchen Man. And he don't make no noise in there. He ain't got nothing. So he'll be happy to be in the cell where he, you know, something is in the cell and he cool. Brilliant idea. I go holler at Kitchen Man. I say, look, man, look, you and your cellar in here, man, y'all ain't getting along. You know, y'all in here scrapping every day, man. Look, I got a solution. I tell the cellar, man, look, I switch sales with you. You know, you can go over here with my sale partner, man. I come over here, man. That eliminates the situation. It ain't like you being made to move or nothing. I'm asking you to switch, man, just to dissolve the situation. I don't really want to be over there anyway. I prefer to be over here. Blah, 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 blah. We come to a conclusion. We say, okay, we all fill out the paperwork. Turn it into the supervisor. We get the move made. Now, I'm in here with Kitchen Man. This is how Kitchen Man became my sale partner, right? So, I get in here with Kitchen Man, man. Kitchen Man ain't got a pot to piss in, a window to throw it out of, or a ground to catch it, you know? <laughs> he ain't got nothing. So, I'm like, how is you selling all of these vegetables and sandwiches and stuff and you don't got nothing? You know, but what happened is he fall into the same trap as a lot of dudes do in penitentiary. They get in there, they don't know how to budget because they ain't ever paid no bills or did nothing on the street. 
they don't know how to budget, they don't know how to uh, uh, save, they don't know how to space their stuff out. So what they do is, they will will go borrow from a store box man and borrow and borrow and borrow and you got to pay interest on it sometimes 100 percent interest and so when you do get a little money your little state check in you owe it all all out because you done already borrowed and you got to pay it all back when you do come back with sandwiches and food and you sell it you take that money and then you go and buy some other stuff you need tobacco coffee or whatever and you don't have anything so you stay in a whole perpetual cycle of in debt at all times and never accumulate anything. He ain't got no TV, he ain't got no radio, he ain't got no headphones, he ain't got hardly no cosmetics, he ain't got no food, he ain't got nothing, you know? So when I come in the cell, I mean, I got I got everything. I got everything in, in excess, you know? So it's a blessing to him because I'm always look out for my cell partner because I figure like if you, if you cool enough for me to lay my head down in here with you, well, you cool enough for me to try to help you if I can help you. You know, no matter who you are, no matter what race, color, or whatever, if you in the cell with me and you need help, I'm going to try to help you. As long as you respect that cell and keep that cell kind of clean, then I'm going to be able to help you if I can help you, you know. So that's what I was telling him. Look, when you try to get yourself out of debt, man, stop borrowing stuff, man. If you need a little something to eat, a little cosmetics or whatever, I got you until you can get on your feet. But the first thing you got to do is stop borrowing from people so you won't still be on stuff. Go ahead and save up your little money. So he was like, yeah, I got to try to save my money anyway, man, because I want to try to get me a TV. You know, I ain't got no TV. I'm like, all right, we'll just go ahead and try to save your money. You know what I'm saying? And we, you know what I'm saying? I got you far as on the food, whatever, whatever. Because I'm glad to have him in the cell with me now because he gone most of the time, 90% of the time. So I can actually get in the cell, do what I do get on the phone, call people, try to, you know, uh, uh, meet new people and see what's going on out in the world. I'm having a ball with this phone, you know, because I've been gone so long and this phone has presented a new, uh, 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 newfound freedom for me. It's like, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's hard to explain if you're in prison and you've been in there all the years that I've been in there and now you get to get a phone and you got access to things you couldn't see. You got access to movies that you could pull up. You got access to information you could pull up. You got access to pictures of people you haven't seen in years. You know, at this time, it wasn't no... If it was, I didn't know anything about Facebook and Instagram and all that. It was MySpace. MySpace was jumping. So I would go on MySpace and I would end up being on MySpace and see somebody and then go to their friends and then to their friends and then to their friends and it just was an all day thing. And I'm hiding and dipping and ducking, trying to duck the police. And then at the same time, I'm just loving it because I, I feel like I, I, I've escaped the prison. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know, I'm living in a whole nother world that don't nobody know about. Don't nobody know I got the phone with me and my peoples and I'm like, I, I feel like I'm, I'm just getting away, you know what I'm saying? So I got to stay in this good space and stay where I feel safe. And I'm feeling like I'm safe in the cell with Kitchen Man. He's not nosy. When he come in the cell, he actually gets in the bed every time he's in the cell and pulls the sheet all the way over his head because he ain't no TV or nothing. And he'll pull the sheet all the way over his head. He'll just lay up there and just be quiet until the door's open. When the door's open, he'll get up, get himself together, and he go out. Every time the door's open, he out the cell, which was perfect for me. You know what I'm saying? Because I was on the phone. So anyway, that's my salad, you know, kitchen man. So uh, I'm trying to look out for him because in actuality, he looking out for me. Little do he know. But man, let me tell you something. You can help a person all day long, but if they're not willing to help themselves, man, it's futile, man. He just, he just was like, can't get right, man. He couldn't get it right. He still kept doing the same thing, barring this, that, and the third. But you trying to save money to get a TV. How you going to do that when you're doing what you do? You know, so I had came up in my mind. I said, listen, man, because I want him to be comfortable in there because I want to be comfortable. So people will be selling TVs on the yard. You know, they be hot TVs, hot, you know what that means. They probably stole them from somebody or somebody probably took it from somebody or somebody probably owed some money and they confiscated it or whatever. So dudes will sell them on the yard. So I went, you know, put the word out. I'm trying to find one, you know what I'm saying? The TV woo -woo -woo, for a nice price or whatever. Um, one come up, right? So I cop the TV for him, you know, and um, I, I I I bring the TV back. I give it to him one day. He come from work. I said, man, look, I got your TV off the yard, bro. 
You ain't got to worry about trying to save no money, get no TV, man. Save that money right there, try to get your commissary. Why you trying to get your commissary? I'm going to help you hold you down. You can eat. You know, I got plenty of food. You know, I got a store box. I got plenty of food. So, you you are. He was like, man, you ain't got to do all that. I'm all right. He was trying to use, let his pride get in the way, which a lot of dudes would do. So, I'm letting him know, I don't need nothing from you, bro. I'm just trying to help you because I'm in the sale with you. You know what I'm saying? Just get yourself together, man. You got a TV in there. You know, it ain't brand new, but it, it, it'll do the job. So, he like, well, what I owe you? I see you don't owe me nothing. Just get yourself together. You know, like I say, so he was thankful, acting like he was thankful anyway. And um, as, you know, the days and weeks and stuff went on, you know, I'm in my routine now. When he gone, I'm using the phone. I'm, you know, doing what I do. He is still doing the same foolishness, man. The same foolishness that he been doing. Barring, still going, you know, he's just in that perpetual cycle that he can't break, you know. But now he got a TV, but he barely even watched the TV. So don't you know about a month and a half? It is less than a month and a half go by. Do you know I, I I come back up in the cell one day, man, and I look up on the shelf and I don't I don't see the TV. So I'm like, I know for a fact ain't nobody come up in my cell and take nothing up out of here. You know that's you know my stuff's still here. So I'm like, wait, wait, you know where's the TV? So I don't say nothing. I wait till count time come. When count time come. He come in the cell. So I'm hollering at him and everything, and I say, uh, yo, where the TV at, bro? <laughs> Do you know this cat had the audacity to tell me, um, oh, um, I owe such and such, uh, this amount of money, and, um, he, I ain't have it, man, so, you know, I, I gave him the TV, and he gave me the extra money and everything, so, you know, I had to pay my bills, pay my debt with it. You can't make this stuff up, man. Don't you know at that moment right there, I knew that, like I say, he he, he he ain't built like that, that you know, that rough and tough stuff. But I swear to God, I wanted to put hands on him so bad. Because out of the kindness of my heart, I'm going to get you a TV and you got the audacity to sell the TV, bro. To take care of debt when I'm trying to keep you out of debt and put the TV in your, you know what I'm saying, in your hands. Man, I was so mad, man. I wanted to go down there to the dude that he gave it to and take the TV back, but I know that wasn't my place because that dude ain't do nothing wrong. He did what he was supposed to do, get his money and get paid. But Kitchen Man, oh my God, man. I was so blood mad with him, man. I I, I was like, man, oh my God. But I, I'm in a position where I got to humble myself because I need him in the cell because my next cell partner can be worse. If you got a cell partner that ain't worth jack and stays in that cell or might be the police, then you got that cell phone. It's like not having it at all because it's going to be times where they're going to be nosy. It's going to be times where they might notice the phone or they might get a whip at you and they might tell on you. They might drop a little note. Or, so I needed him in there because I knew no matter what, all of his flaws, he wasn't the police. You know, he wasn't going to, you know, be that nosy. He wasn't going to be in that cell. He didn't. He probably knew less about cell phone than me. So he wasn't looking for the signs that I was displaying to let him know that I had one. You know, moving around or I had the phone on silent so when it when it made noise or something, it was like zzz. He ain't know what that was. You know what I'm saying? I could hear it. I knew he could hear it sometimes. But he didn't know what it was and he didn't ask. You know, when a normal nose is, what is that? Ooh. So it was working out, man. So I had to deal with him. But trust and believe me, when he sold that TV, man, I wanted it. Uh, kitchen man, kitchen man, kitchen man. Please subscribe, man. Like and share this video, man. It, it gets better, man. I'm telling you, these are some of the things you got to go through when you're incarcerated, man. Just a few. It's just many, many more. But yeah, man, kitchen man sold that TV, man. I felt so disrespected, man. And it was like, I ain't, man, I ain't got no more help for you, bro. I can't do nothing for you. You done did that. I feel violated. I feel like you, you know, but that's how I was feeling. But at the same time, like I said, I needed him, you know, so I kept on trying to humble myself about the situation, although I was very, very upset about it, you know, and I did start doing less and less things for him, man, because like I say, he had no drive. He had no get up and go. He was just so content, you know, moving slow like a turtle, hunched over, oh, man, yeah, you know, talking foolish, you know. So I remember, man, I came back one day. 
I went to the gym to work out. So I come back, and uh, as soon as I walk in the block, somebody tell me, say, man, you know, Kitchen Man over there, get me to fight, man. I said, get me to fight. And like I told y'all, Kitchen Man is not built like that. So I'm like, fight who? And then the dude, he said, not built like that. I mean, you know, little, you know, little, you know, dudes, they be getting into little bickering beefs. And this is the same thing. This is about his job in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? One of them stopped him from being able to feel like he's stepping on his toes from being able to get stuff out the kitchen. You trying to get the stuff that I'm trying to get. So they beefing over some 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 kitchen affairs, right? So Kitchen man, the man that told Kitchen man, come on in the cell, I'll beat you up, you know what I'm saying? Kitchen man and went up there, got his little gloves, and putting his little gloves on and act like he gonna go in there. Now, like I told you now, the dude that he tell, that's telling him to come in the cell, he, can't, he ain't gonna bust a grape neither, you know what I'm saying? So it was evenly matched. So when I come and they tell me and I look, I walk over there, you know, cause you're selling, normally you're selling some, you know, you and some. And then if he get into some, it's gonna bring drama to the cell. If the police get involved, it's still coming to the cell. So you got to try to, you know, uh, curtail all of that that type of activity. So I walk over there and ask him what's going on. I'm like, what's up, man? What, what, what you doing over here? He's like, man, no, he trying to call me out, call me in the cell, like I'm scared of some man, I ain't no chump, you know? And I'm like, man, what is y'all arguing about? So he tell me it's about some food. What I said, man, y'all tripping, man. Y'all trying to get in trouble, go to jail over some stuff that don't belong to neither one of y'all. Y'all crazy, man. Come on, man. Get all this foolishness, man. So, you know, dude tell me, oh, yeah, he better not come in. I'm like, man, I'm looking at him like, come on, man. Some back pluck you and knock you out, man. Get out of here. You know, so I squashed the little beat they had for the meantime and tell him, man, look, man, you out here doing all this foolishness, man. You, you, you know, you getting in trouble, man. You, you, you know what I'm saying? You end up going to jail, dog. You know what I'm saying? Do you want to go to jail for some stupidness? You ain't got to worry about what everybody say, whatever. I'm really trying to give him a, a lecture speech, but he ain't really hearing me. He ain't paying that stuff no mind. He just go on, like I say, get on up in the bed and cover himself up like a, a turtle in his shell. But see, Kitchen Man had this thing too. Like I say, he will annoy people. The way he talk and the way he move will annoy the hell out of you. You know what I'm saying? Because you will be talking to him and you'll wait for a response. Hey, yo, kitchen man, did you uh, did you take care of that? He'll be like this. Uh, yeah, I get it. I, I get to it. When I, you know, he had a delayed response and then it was a slow response. So this caused problems with this particular CO. A female CO, if I remember correctly, her name was Hiller. Little older lady, man, more mature lady, uh, small, petite, maybe 120, 130 pounds. Little petite woman. I think she had a little gold crown on her teeth. You know, she wasn't a bad looking woman, you know, but she had a nasty attitude, man, a nasty attitude. Now, I don't know for sure because I had been in this block that long. But I heard she had a real good attitude. She was one of the more better officers, you know, got along with the, with, with the convicts real well. But she had, uh, and prison is, man, I'm trying to tell y'all, man, y'all better, better pay attention, man. Prison is vicious, man. It's vicious, and you have a lot of viciousness in it. Now, the rumor, what I heard was she had, had a bout with cancer, right? And when she had the bout with cancer, she was on chemo and she ended up losing her hair. So a couple of dudes had got mad at her when she said something or they wouldn't let her do something or whatever. And they started joking her about losing her hair and wearing a wig. This turned her cold, you know. So now she don't like no inmates. Now she means all inmates because she categorized everybody for one, one of a few men actions. So she put us all in the category. Now we just all trash. We all slum. We all prisoners, and we we you know we we inhumane. We 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 ain't even human. So that's how she treat people, you know. Now whether that's a good enough excuse because of what dudes did to her or not, nah, it's here or there. But you know that's how she was when I came across. She was just mean as a rattlesnake. So she despised my Sally. She despised him because she would come around and do count. And when they doing count, you're supposed to be standing up facing the door when they do count. 
I'm always standing up. I ain't looking for no drama. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to get on up out of here. And kitchen man would take his time getting down, especially when she came and he was covered up on the bed. So when they get to your cell, you supposed to already be on the floor. If not, they'll stand there and wait. Some of them, they might keep on going. They say something about her. She was standing there and wait. Get down. Get in. I ain't moving until your feet hit the floor. Get your feet on the floor. So he'll be like. And moving in the turtle's pace. And she'll be like, oh, you trying to be funny? You but that's how he was. But she took it personal. Like, oh, you trying to be funny? And he was like. And, and he would just make little gestures and boy, she would get blood mad. I mean, she be hot as fish grease. So she said, I'm gonna start writing you up. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start writing you up. You know, and he was like, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? And so lo and behold, she started writing them up. So she started giving them charge after charge. I'm talking about every week she come to week, she would write them up at least once a week, you know, if not more. And um, she just hated them, man, you know? And sometimes we'll go on lock for whatever reason, uh, lock of officers or shakedown or whatever, and they will feed on the inside. And sometimes when they feed on the inside, I remember one time they was working on the kitchen, so they was feeding on the inside for a while. So now they, they will open the doors, they will bring carts over there to feed us inside the block. And they would open the doors and let us walk down and get the food, right? And he would always be moving so slow and she'd be standing right there, man. And it just used to irk her. You could look at her face and you could see the expression on her face. Like if she could just knock the stuffing out of him, she would, you know. But he didn't care. He he just, he just you know, looked at her and just played it off. And when she said something, you either going to move fast or you ain't going to get your tray or whatever. He'd be like, yeah, you got to feed me. I ain't worried about that. And I ain't going to move no faster than I'm moving. And man, it just it just would piss her off. So like I say, she beefing with him. She writing charges on him once a week. He don't like it, but he don't really care. But he can't do nothing about it, you know. So time goes on, and um, man, um, he gets fired from his job, right? He get fired. He got caught stealing. So they fire him, you know. And the funny thing about a prison job, man, especially like in the kitchen, if you get fired or something from stealing food or something out the kitchen you know you might be gone but you might can go back in like six months or whatever you know but they gonna get rid of you right there at the time or whatever but they always need kitchen workers so he always gonna be able to get back in there no matter what you know unless he you know hit an officer or got uh officer don't like him or he beefing with the officer or the officer then said i don't want him in the kitchen no more you always probably be able to get back in there so um he ain't got no job man so that's even less of nothing of what he already had that he's not gonna have. So he already in an irritable mood. And then I turn around and, and um, I, I noticed that he was acting even more weird than usual, right? And he had got called over to the counselor's office. Um, He had got called to the counselor's office like a week before. And I noticed ever since he had came back, he had been acting kind of funny. But you know, in prison, you don't really ask people what's going on with them. Whenever they want to tell you something, they'll tell you. If they don't want to tell you, they don't tell you. You don't, you just don't do that in prison. You know, you mind your business and you keep it pushed. Even with people in the cell with you, it's just common courtesy. So I remember, you know, like I say, he was acting kind of strange and weird. He was sleeping more often than ever with the joint over the top of his head in this turtle shell. And um I remember my officer came by one day, man, and um, I was in there by myself, and Kitchen Man was out in the block, so he asked me, um, he was like, man, you Sally all right? I was like, he out there in the block, what's up? He was like, um, oh, no, I was just checking to see if he was okay, right? I said, what you mean by that? And he was like, oh, yeah, you know, he got some news last week. I think his mom or somebody passed away. Whoa, you know what I'm saying? And that's like a real big blow to anybody in prison, man. When you lose anybody in there, you like you feel like you're on a rock in a hard place. You can't do anything about it. You just stuck. You just, you know, it's just a horrible, horrible feeling. But and if you take that and be your mother, one of your parents or some of your siblings, it's just amplified that much more. So I can imagine what he was going through. Although the whole time I've been in the cell with him, he, he didn't have good family ties. They didn't, I mean, meaning like from, from the outside looking in. I never saw him using the phone. I never saw him get visits. He didn't get no money in. So he wasn't getting a lot of support, but that doesn't mean that still that you don't love your family or your family don't love you. 
you know, but I just noticed that. But I, when he said that, it just put it in perspective. I could see the change in his attitude, the change in his personality, that he was dealing with something that was deep, deeper than, you know what I'm saying, just him being, you know, awkward kind of dude, right? So, um, he had a lot going on, to say the least. Now, while he got all of this going on, man, you, this woman still don't like him, so she's still pressing him. Every week she write charges on him. She's talking stuff to him. He's ignoring her. He's still doing what he do. But she came around this one particular time, man, and she was like, um, Young, you still you still playing, you still ain't getting up, huh? You still taking your time. I'm a, I'm I'ma keep writing you up. I'ma keep writing you up till they get you up out of here. Cause I don't even want you over here in my block. I'ma just keep on writing you up. Just keep on playing with me. And man, he said to her in his nice little low tone voice, he said, uh, nah, you keep playing with me and I'm gonna F you up. And I was shocked that he said it myself. And she said, What what, what you say? And I know she heard him, but she was like, what you say? Say it again. Say it again. He said, you heard me? He said, she said, no, say it again. I want to hear it for sure what you say, because I had you locked up right now, you know? So he said, man, get on away from my cell. She said, all right, I got you. I got you. Don't be standing up when I come through here this evening. So she leave. So I look at him. I'm like, man, what's wrong with you, man? You know, a lady can lock you up for that zone right there alone, man. He said, man, I ain't thinking about her. You know, so I'm like, okay, I don't even press the issue because like I say, now I know the behind the scenes. I know he going through something, you know. But at the same time, man, you, you playing with fire, you know, you threaten one of them officers, you going to jail. Ain't, ain't no ins, as if it's a bust about it because whatever they say is law. They come in down and like you. They tell a lie on you. They say you said something, you going to jail. So it, it ain't no you guilt, you innocent to prove guilty. You guilty and you not going to be able to prove you innocent when you're in prison. That's just as simple as that. I, that's just you know straight up whatever they say that's what they're gonna believe they gonna they gonna act like the officers is god they're gonna simply tell you straight to your face oh no I don't, my officers don't lie no they, they don't lie they said you did it you did it are you for real oh yeah they serious for real so sure enough she come in there that evening and he getting down but he's not all the way on the floor and she says, oh, you thought I was playing. You Don't worry about it, don't worry, take your time. You gonna read about it, you gonna read about it. She go on about her business. Sure enough, man, that lady uh, wrote him a charge. So when you get a charge written on you, what happened is they will write the charge and that shift get off like at four o'clock or whatever it is. And the next shift that comes on will call you and serve the charge on you and give you the charge to let you know such and such wrote you up today. Heck of the charge. These are your rights. Sign this, sign that. Do you want to go to the hearing? Da, 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 da. Boom. So he get the charge, man. They call him out there. You know about the time that they call you for the charge. Everybody know about what time it is. If they give me the call, you they call for the charge. Everybody think they got a charge that day. They be waiting. Them. They gonna call my name, they gonna call my name. You don't know. They start calling out names over the speaker, report to the watch command officer, you know you probably got a charge. So they call him, he go. He come back, right? Come up in the cell, got the little paper fold up in the hand. You see the paper, you already know what it is. But I'm like, man, you, you got rolled up again though. No. He was like, yeah, yeah, I told him, man. She think I'm playing with her. I said, man, you gotta leave that lady alone, dog. You gotta leave her alone, man. You see she ain't playing, man. She don't like you. So she targeting you, you just gotta be on point. Get up every time you know she on ship, be standing up when she come by, man. You, you, you gotta duck her. I'm trying to keep the situation down, cause like I say, I'm riding dirty every day. Every day I got something here I'm supposed to have. I know I'm wrong, y'all don't, but that's how I was living. So I don't need no drama coming to the cell. This is the reason why I got in the cell with you. And this is what I'm trying to talk to him about to make him understand. I'm not saying about the phone and all that. I'm just trying to keep him in a frame of mind that don't bring no drama to the cell, man. Just, you know, give him some type of reasoning. But I got my own reasoning for trying to keep him in line. So he's like, man, I'm, I said, man, leave her alone, man. Just leave her alone, dog, you know what I'm saying? So he was like, mm, okay, all right. So, man, let me tell you something. You can't, you, you or nobody else couldn't have told me what was going to happen after this. Nobody could have told me that. And everybody on this compound who know 
kitchen, man, with nobody when they would be able to predict what was going to happen either. What was to come, you know, the next day. Who would have known this, right? And I'm sitting in here myself now as I'm reminiscing, thinking back about it. You know what I'm saying? How in all I was when this transpired. I mean, it just was shocking, man. And it was just uh, out of the blue. And let me tell y'all something, man. <laughs> Kitchen man shook up the compound, man. Kitchen man shook up the compound, man. And he in my cell. And I got all of this going on. And there the spotlight right on me. And man, let me tell you, boy, I was nervous. Perfect. Woo! What y'all think happened, man? You wouldn't be able to guess because I couldn't guess. But the next day, man, the shift changed. She come back to work. The, uh, the officer that wrote him the charge, that shift is back on early in the morning. So we go to breakfast and everything, our regular routine. We come back. You know, like I say, kitchen man ain't got no job no more now, but he still stays out of the cell all the time. So it's cool. Whenever it's wrecked, he's out the cell. So it's morning time. It's after breakfast and everything. So I'm getting ready to clean up the cell. You know, we got to manually clean up in there. You got to get down on your knees, get dirty, man, with a rag and wash, wash the floor and all of that and the walls and stuff. So I'm getting ready to do all of that to get, get the cell, you know, keep the cell in compliance and nice and neat. And, um... He's going out in the park. So he goes out and I'm up in there doing that and I'm in there doing it for maybe about five, 10 minutes and the door popped back open and he come in. So I'm like, what's up? You gotta use the bathroom or something? He was like, nah, 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 I just gotta get a cigarette. I'm like, man, I could have hand you a cigarette through the door, man. You see me cleaning up and stuff, dog, what's up? He's like, yeah, yeah, I know, I got it, I got it. So we go up there and get his little cigarette. He got roll-ups. He rolled to make his own cigarette, right? So he get the cigarette, he making his own cigarette. He's standing over by the toilet. So the tobacco will fall in the toilet if any one waste. So I'm sitting up here waiting for him. I'm looking at him like, for real. You know, so he rolled his cigarette up, right? Then he light the cigarette and start smoking the cigarette. So he's just sitting there puffing. So I'm looking at him like, bro, can't you see me cleaning up? And he was like, oh, yeah, 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 I'm getting ready to go. I'm getting ready to go. Hold up, hold up. I just wanted to get a couple of hits. So he hit the cigarette, hit the cigarette a couple more times, pluck the joint in the toilet, flush the toilet, go out, get the door closed. When he get the door closed, I go back to cleaning up. I'm like, you know, he gone, you know. But I, like I say, I deal with him, you know. Man, I'm in the cell probably. It's probably about 10 more minutes pass by, right? And the next thing you know, I heard a big ruckus. Ka -da -da -da. Feet scratching. Skirt, skirt, skirt. When you heard all of that, that's prison sound. You know something going on. Somebody getting busy, somebody fighting, something going on. It's just, it's just something, just jump. Your ears is trained to that. It's in tune to that. When you've been locked up as long as I have. So I, I'm on the floor, so I automatically get up. Then I heard keys and the doors, and I heard police and, and radios. By the time I get to the door, I see... Police come running in everywhere. Dudes is scattering everywhere. I'm like, what, what in the hell going on? So they said, go to your cell. Everybody lock up. Lock up right now. Get to your cell. Get to your cell. So I'm like, what the hell? So I'm nervous, nervous. You know, I'm sitting here, like I say, I'm riding dirty. I don't know if it's a shakedown coming or what. I got, man, I got contraband in here like I don't know what, man. I got the phone in here, man. They find that phone and game over. You know, whole compound going on lock and it's all going to be on me. All eyes on me like Tupac. I got, you know, knife in there. I got to protect myself. I got cash money. I'm just, I'm dirty. I'm filthy. So I'm scared is all outdoors. So everybody how to lock up. So I see dudes going to their cell. So one dude is going by my cell. And he's going, he's sitting next to me. So I'm in the joint. I'm looking for my celly. And I'm looking right here. I don't see him. So I'm at the door like, what's going on, man? What's going on? So the dude is going next door to me. He stopped by my cell. He said, man, yo, celly, man. I said, my celly, what? He said, man, yo, celly walked up to the hiller, man, and tapped her on the shoulder. She turned around. He punched her in the face. Man, I said, what? What? Man, I'm in shock, man. I'm like, kitchen, man. He said, yeah, man. He punched her in the face, man. I'm like, oh, my. God, man. So now I'm really terrified because it's him. It's my celly. There's all this drama about. So the police definitely coming to my cell. Now, where they, how they coming? I don't know, but I know they coming. 
So I got to get myself cleaned up. I got to get this stuff put away. I got to get this stuff here. Now, I got to hide place this, this, this out of this world. You know, that's why I wanted to sell. I got to hide places out of this world. I mean, it's going to take Sherlock Holmes to find this stuff, man, for real. But I got to get it in the spot. And I got to watch the door at the same time. I don't know if the police coming straight to my cell. You know, I'm just under pressure. Right, so I'm trying to hide this stuff where it's supposed to be hid, and I'm trying to watch the door at the same time. So it's crazy, man. I'm just in, in a, I'm just in a panic, and I'm like, mm, and it's, things is running through my head, like, what in the hell was wrong with him? What you know? So man, I'm going through all of this. I'm nervous, purpose I don't know what. So I end up getting my stuff hid where it's supposed to be. <sighs> Jet back up to the door. I get up to the door. I'm looking out here. I'm trying to see what's going on. Most of everybody gone, but it's like. Flooded with police in here. Police is everywhere. So I'm like, man, what in the heck is going on? So then the dude next door, he started talking to me, telling me what was going on. He was like, man, I said, man, yo, what, what happened, man? He said, man, yo, Sally walked up to Hillary while she was at the booth, tapped her on her shoulder, and when she turned around, he said, didn't I tell you? Bop! And punched her in the face. I said, what? He said, yeah, man. He said, she fell back against the jump and poured her ink pen out and said, hit me again, hit me again. And she had a little nose or something was bleeding and she had the ink pen in his hand and said, come on, hit me again. And he said, man, yo, Sally just looked at a man and, and waved his hand all to her and walked over and asked him to do for a cigarette. I said, man, are you kidding me? He said, hell yeah. He said, then the side door came open and this other dude named Solo he said he see her, he tried to pull her out the booth. No, come on, Miss Hilla, get out here, come on, get out. And say she turned around on him with the ink pen, like, get your hand off me, don't touch me. And he was trying to help her, trying to be Captain Saver CO and end up costing them too, cause he got locked up for putting his hands on the officer. Even though he trying to help her, he get locked up for putting his hands on the officer. See what I'm saying? So it don't pay to be nice in prison neither, because like I say, Man, you the enemy. You know what I'm saying? If they got that different uniform on, trust and believe, you the enemy. And especially when something like that going down. Yeah, so he ended up getting locked up himself. And he had assault charge on her for just trying to help her and save her. But he should have minded his business. You know what I'm saying? Then he ended up getting a bad reputation for that too. Because you'll get that as well. Oh, he tried to help the police. So he just messed his whole uh, situation up. <laughs> All the way around the board. You got locked up. You got a charge, you know what I'm saying, for something, and then you just, you just put a stain on your reputation, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Anyway, they say, man, that um, that's what he did, man, and they say when the police came running in there, they pointed him out, man, they said they ran over there, which is what they gonna do. Get him, get him. Beat them all up, was dragging them all out there, hog tied them, took them out there. Like I told you, Kitchen Man ain't built like that, man. He, 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 he tall and skinny as frail as I don't know what. You know, his his biceps probably about the size of my wrist. So he ain't built for that press, but they, they say they put a, a decent beating on him and took him on back in the back. And I'm quite sure when he got back there, he got some more whoopings. Because that's what they're going to do to you. You know, if you put your hand on the officer, they're going to beat you. When they get a chance and get the cameras out of the way, they're going to whoop you. You know what I'm saying? And if you put your hand on a female officer, they're going to whoop you even that much worse. And they're going to lie about it. They're going to say they didn't do it. They're going to say you was resisting. They're going to say you was fighting back. They're going to come up with all types of excuses why you got this uh, knots on you or broken bones or missing teeth or whatever the case may be. But I know he got messed up real bad. I found out later on when I tell y'all in the story. But I know they whooped him on his way out as well. But eyes on him then. So the, the whooping is going to be minimal when the eyes on you. But it's when the ass can't see you is when you're going to take that brutal, that brutal beat. But, um, yeah, they dragged him out there, man. So, needless to say, I'm up in that cell still, like, super paranoid, super scared because, like I say, I got stuff in there, man. And I know they coming. And, like I say, the chances of them finding it is slim to none. But I don't know how they coming at me because they act foolish. You know, that's just a part of the prison, too. They, they they act stupid. You know what I'm saying? When something like that happened, then they, all of a sudden, they got authority complex. They trying to be Superman. They trying to be tough guys and all this and all that. Now, I ain't trying to go for all of that because, you know, I'm still me. 
and I ain't gonna let you let you do anything to me. You know, that's part of my manhood. You you gonna treat me like a man. I'm the man that you treat me like a man. And, you know, and whatever. If you don't want to do it, then we we gonna do whatever else we got to do. So, sure enough, man, here they come. They come up to my cell, man, and um, they run up in there and they call me. They say, come to the door. I say, what's up? They say, um, um, you selling stuff in here? Where you selling stuff at? Packing stuff up. I said, yeah, his stuff already packed up because he ain't had nothing. And I knew what the, I knew the count. I, I know he going to jail. So I said, yeah, that goes stuff. I got his stuff already right here. He said, oh, 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 you got his stuff already packed. Oh, you knew what he was going to do. I said, man, get, man, get over, man. Nah, I don't know what he going to do. And I don't know what he did. You know, I don't know nothing. I'm just telling you that's his stuff right there. They said, oh, oh, you getting smart. I said, man, listen, I ain't trying to hurt none of that. None of that. Do you want his stuff or not? Yeah, we'll put it to the door, back up, back up on, get back up, up to the bunk. So I bag up, they open the door, they grab his stuff and everything, right, take it on out. Like I say, already they pushing something at me as if I had something to do with the situation, you know. Obviously, I'm in my cell. Obviously, I ain't had nothing to do with the situation. So I don't know what, what, what the attitude is about, but this is how they treat, you know, this is how they coming at. So um, they leave. I'm uh I'm still kind of like on high alert because they still could come back and want to shake the cell down to look for whatever. Nothing could be in there, but they still might want to look because they want to act like they're doing something that's really, you know, uh, 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 investigative or, 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 you know, whatever they want to call it, doing their due diligence. But whatever happened, happened, and that's that. You got the culprit, you got her saying who did what to her, and that's it. What, did you, what else are you looking for? But that's how they be doing. So they didn't, they didn't come back that day at all, but we on lockdown. They done locked the whole block down. Ain't nobody in that block moving at all. We is officially on lockdown because they doing investigation because the officer got beat up, female officer dead, and they want to find out, what, get to the bottom of it. <laughs> how you gonna do that? I don't know, but that's the excuses for having us locked down. Oh man, lo and behold, the next day, I was nervous all night, needless to say, y'all. But lo and behold, the next day, I heard noise out in the block. They make noise when the police come on the floor. And if it's big, big people come on the floor, the warden, the major, somebody like that, they make a different noise. So I heard that noise. So I jump up automatically and I go to the door. I look out. I see the warden, the major, the lieutenant, sergeant, a couple of officers walking around in the pod. Ain't nobody out there because we all locked behind the door. So they going from cell to cell, looking in cells and talking, walking and talking slow, like they surveying animals in a zoo. That's what it feels like too. It, it feels exactly like that. So I'm on the top tier. So they going around the bottom real slow, walking and talking. And um, they get coming up the stairs, coming around the side of the top tier. So when they come around the top, they get into my cell. I can hear them because I'm in the door and I can hear them talking before they get there. So I heard a warden, which is a female at the time. I heard her say, uh, what cell was he in? So they called my cell out and they coming up on it, right? So who was it selling? I heard them say my name before they even get to my cell. So I back up away from the door as if I won't, you know, ear hustling, which I was. And when they get to my cell, they tap on the door. Come up front. I said, what's up? He said, um, is your cellar the one that got locked up yesterday? I said, yeah. He said, um, do you uh, know what happened? I said, I know as much about it as you do, you know? Well, she said, well, um, I need to find out why an a inmate would attack my officer, let alone a female officer. I said, well, your guess is as good as mine. I don't know what happened. I ain't got nothing to do with it. It's not my business, you know. She said, well, he was your sale partner. I said, well, that's all he was. He just was my sale partner, you know. She said, well, um, I'm going to lock you up. I said, lock me up for what? She said, I'm going to lock you up for investigation. I said, investigation for what? I'm trying to be calm, but I want to explode. She said, because I need to get to the bottom of why somebody would assault my officer, a female officer, and I need to get to the bottom of it. And you was his sale partner, so I need to know if you had anything to do with it. And I need to uh, have you under investigation until I can find out exactly what was going on. I said, how could I possibly have something to do with it when I wasn't even out of the block? 
I had I didn't see what happened. I don't know what happened. Haven't been out myself before it happened or since. You know, so what could I possibly have to do with it? I said, did the female officer say I had anything to do with it? She said, I'm not gonna argue with you. I'm not gonna discuss nothing with you. We will let the investigation, you know, determine what happens. If you didn't have nothing to do with it, then you will be released. But until then, you're going to jail for investigation, so I suggest you pack your stuff. Now, these are the type of moments in prison where you have to use common sense over uh, emotions because my emotions wanted to cuss her out, scream, you know, uh, obscenities and everything because I feel like, I don't feel like I know I'm being done wrong, but I'm in a no-win situation. It ain't nothing I can do. She, whatever she say is law. If she say I'm going to jail, I'm going to jail. So me cussing her out ain't gonna behoove me none because I'm going to jail. Now I can go to jail under investigation, like she said, or I can cuss her out and go to jail under charges because she gonna give me charge for cussing her out. She might say I threaten her, so on and so forth. So these are the positions that you in when you incarcerated, man. They will drag you and you can do nothing about it, man. So pay attention, young fellas, for you put yourself in this position. Because, man, you have no, absolutely no say and no control in there when they doing what they want to do to you, bro. And I just had to roll with it. Now I'm in a dilemma because I got to pack up and leave and I got all this contraband in here that cannot go with me. And, man, I'm just, just mind-boggled. Mind-boggled, man, on how I got myself in this position trying to help somebody. Trying to look out for somebody. Now, I'm in a world of, of, of trouble and in a, in a conundrum because I'm going to jail and I got to leave this stuff over here. I got, like I say, I got money, I got the, my protection, I got uh, the, the phone. And the, and the phone is just a huge commodity and I got to leave this because you, I can't take it with me. It's impossible. If you try to take it with you, you a fool because you're going to get caught with it and then that's the ball game. That's something you ain't coming out of jail for. You're going to stay back there until you go through the charge or whatever. Then they're going to ship you, you get transferred, you may go through an undetermined amount of stuff. I can tell y'all about the phone situation another day. Those phones ain't nothing to play with in penitentiary. You may have a lot of fun with it, but when you get caught, man, it's, you get, you'll be asking yourself, was it worth it? Because they're going to drag you, and I mean drag you. And I've been dragged, trust me, messing with them phones. But, um, yeah, man, so now I'm stuck. What can I do? You know, so my only recourse is to try to holler at my family and let them know, look, I'm getting locked up. You're going to have to try to get over here and get this stuff, man. But now you're in a, all types of predicament because I don't know if, uh, first of all, when I go to jail, I know I ain't did nothing. Hopefully, it'll all work out in my favor, but it don't have to work out in your favor because you could be right and they gonna make you wrong in there. First of all, you need to know that. So I'm saying, even if it do work out and I get out of jail in a couple of days, a week or whatever, they may not even put me back over here. They may put me somewhere else. And it's a three institution prison. So I may be all the way on the other side and can't get over here to get, retrieve my property, to retrieve this phone. Ain't like you could just get a phone. That mean, you know what I'm saying? I got something that's, you know, this a commodity, a real, real commodity. So I need to, my focus is to try to get that back if I could possibly can. Am I gonna be able to retrieve it? So now I got to ask myself all these questions. Am I gonna be able to get back over here? Am I gonna be able to get it? Is my people gonna be able to get it when I'm gone? So it just put me in a, a heck of a predicament, man. So sure as I don't know what, man, to come lock me up. I try to get word to them to get it. It's gonna be hard though because when they do let them off lot, someone else might already be in the cell. Now it's a is 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 uh um is 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 very unlikely that they're gonna find it. Cause like I told you, the hiding spot is some Sherlock Holmes stuff. So very unlikely, but it's possible. Anything is possible. But then even if they in there, then I got my people got to be able to say, look, let me get in your cell, try to get something out here. You know, do my say what you want to get, you know. So it's just it's just tricky. And I'm in a I'm in a trick bag now for nothing. You know what I'm saying? So um yeah, man. So they lock me up, they take me back there, going through all this fakeness, this hoopla about nothing. They end up locking another dude up in the block as well. So what they try to 
turn around and say that we both, me and him, get locked up on the investigation because we supposed to be the two dudes that's running the block. And then coincidentally, uh, Kitchen Man is my selling. So this warrants an investigation. So he pissed off like I don't know what because he getting locked up out of his comfort zone for no fault of his own. And I'm pissed off. I'm getting locked up too for no fault of my own. But then he kind of like saw it with me because he acting like, well, it's your self part that did it, you know. And man, you know, so it's just a, it's, man, the dynamics in prison is, is off the, it's off the chain, man. You know, it's just crazy the things that people go through in there, the small things that can create tension, the small things that can create, create beefs. You know, that, you know, put friction between me and him for no reason. This is some third party, fourth party stuff, but he gonna have a little tool with me because this is my celly. Like I could control my celly, you know, crazy. But this is how things go in prison, which can turn deadly at any time, you know? So anyway, man, I'm back there, man. And then, man, uh, uh, uh you get to go to a hearing so they can determine whether you're not it's enough information to keep you back there whether you should be given a charge or whatever or whether you should just remain under investigation until they come to a conclusion so i go they tell me to remain under investigation that they can come to a conclusion so i go back and then they got to bring me paperwork to sign that says that you know you back here under segregation investigation until you know pending the outcome of the investigation so the dude bring me the paper to sign <laughs> Now, lo and behold, they beat Kitchen Man up real bad when he got back there. And I'm quite sure they tried to put pressure on him and try to do this, that, and the third, but it don't excuse what I'm getting ready to tell you. Blew my mind. So the dude brought me the paperwork. He said, man, come to the bars, man, sign this paperwork. So I get the paperwork, I get ready to sign it right. When I look at it, it got, it, it got his name on it, my sale partners. So I know it ain't my paperwork. So I tell the CEO, I said, man, the same ass, man. He said, you sure? I said, yeah, I'm sure. He said, read it and see. He trying to tell me to read it. So I said, huh? So I read it. Whew, this would say no good deed goes unpunished. Don't y'all know the kitchen man? They didn't beat this man or whatever. Which, like I say, no excuse. or did whatever they did to him. Asked him why he did what he did. Instead of telling him that the lady was pressing him and pressing him and arguing with him and writing charges on him every week, he tells the people, because he said, claim they asked him. Later, I heard, but claim they asked him, um, did I put him up to doing that? And he tells the people, yeah, I put him up to doing it because I didn't like her and I didn't want her on the block no more. So I put him up to doing that, what he did. Can you believe that? I put him up to go punch a CO in the face, a female CO. Are you kidding me? You know what I'm saying? So yeah, when I'm reading it, I can't believe what I'm reading. But that just goes to show you never know who you're dealing with when you when you you know in the midst of somebody. I wouldn't have thought he would have did that, let alone did what he did to him. But that's why you never know people. That man actually said, made a statement and said that I put him up to doing that because I didn't want her in the block, as well as the other dude that was locked up. Because they had to ask him because they really wanted to get rid of me and him, the administration, for whatever reasons. But he said, yeah, we put him up, we put him up. But I was the main one because I was his son. Man, I said, man, if this ain't a bunch of foolishness, so I gave the paperwork back to the dude. I said, yeah, I, I read it, it ain't mine. He said, okay, and he taking it and leave. He said, I'll bring you yours back in a minute and boy, me mine's I ain't up signing. But that's how I found out the kitchen the kitchen man, you know, low key jab, try to put the weight on me, you know, try to, you know, shift it all on me. But, you know, God is good all the time and, you know, it won't no evidence or no proof to that. And they got my institutional record, they know good and well, I'm not gonna do nothing and, and like that. If I got a problem, I'm gonna handle myself and I'm definitely not gonna put my hands on no woman. So they know this not to be true, but I still end up staying back there, y'all, for a month and a half. A month and a half for nothing. Then when I get back out, I'm on the other side of the yard. So now I'm on the whole other side of the yard trying to figure out now how am I going to get this phone back? You know, the money and everything else, I phone, how can I get this phone? And my people had the phone. 
So the only way to get the phone was out of unit movement. And this is when we had like classes. If you had a special class and you get the once, twice a day, they got out of unit movement where you go from one institution to the other. They got all these police out there standing watching while you walk across the street, but it's still caged in. You can't like take off running there. But you go from one institution to the other and it's called out of unit movement. But if you get caught going out of unit movement and you don't supposed to, if you're not scheduled for a class and things, them people will actually give you a attempted escape charge. So, this tell you how important the phone was at the time, man, because I was willing to take that chance because I was trying to get that phone, man. Yeah, I was living foolish and, and, and stupid. I was not making good decisions, you know, at this time. So, I got my people telling me, we done came up with a plan where they call out of unit movement. You come like you can ready to come to a class over here. I'm gonna come like I'm getting ready to come to a class over here. When we see each other, we make the exchange, and then we turn around and act like we forgot something. And we got to do this quick. We got to be able to make this jump off without a hitch because if not, it don't work right. We caught, we, we late, you know. And I'm really late because I'm gonna have a phone on. Man, like I said, fortunately it worked, man. We pulled it off. I got the phone back, man. I got on back where I was supposed to be. I was happy as a pig and slop, you know, and it was just an experience that I went through that I was able to come out of, man. But these are some of the things that you go through when you're in prison, man. I know it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's a lot, man, but I'm, this is it's just days. Now, just imagine these is years and years and decades of foolishness like this that I have encountered and went through with different cell partners. All of this was over kitchen man's actions my cell partner's actions but your cell partner you gonna bear the burdens of his 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 uh actions as well believe that one way or another either with the inmates the convicts or the administration so you always got to have somebody in that cell that you kind of like see eye to eye with that you kind of like got to understand it with because like i say you don't never know what he gonna get into and you don't never know what he gonna get you into but Hopefully, man, y'all enjoyed this story, man, about old Kitchen Man. Shout out to you, man. I hold no grudges, man, but I hope you're doing well. I hope you're all right, man. But uh, uh, you got me that time. You got me real good, man. But, you know, that's how the cookie crumbles. But, man, like I say, it's, 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 uh, it's a blessing in every lesson, man. And the blessing is, man, that I, I didn't really get no charge. I didn't get, you know, no street charge or nothing like that for some foolishness that I didn't do. Uh, you know, kitchen man ended up getting a street charge, assault and battery on her. So I didn't get in that situation. And it was always a lesson learned in these situations. I learned just to be more careful, to put myself in better uh, situations, to make better decisions. Man, I knew I should have stopped messing with that phone then, you know, but I didn't. It took me a lot more time to learn that. I had to learn the hard way, you know. i tell y'all about that one day. But, you know, you grow from these things if you lucky. You grow from these situations, man. But it made me realize, like I say, man, when you're in prison, you have no control. None. People control your life, your actions, and everything you do. And they dictate your, they dictate your life. They dictate your life. So you want to have control of your life, you got to remain free, bro. You got to remain free. Don't let them people trap you up, man, and run your life. Because everything that you got a problem with out here on the street, you're going to have a problem with in there in prison times 10. And the only thing about it is you ain't going to be able to make the decisions where how you deal with it in there yourself. People are going to make those decisions for you. Out here, at least you got the opportunity to make the decisions yourself. So, man, value that freedom, man, and um, keep it as long as possible, forever, if possible. In the meantime, man, I appreciate y'all, man. Be safe, be smart, make good decisions, man. I'll catch you the next time, man. On my cellmate edition, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the unbelievable. Peace out. The bank is special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. Out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.